What's up brand builders, Stephen Hurahan here at brandmasteracademy.com and in this video you're going to learn 10 signs that you should fire your client right now so you can focus those efforts in investing in yourself and find the right clients that value what you do. Now, if you're new to the channel and you wanna build brands that go beyond the visuals using strategy, psychology, and creative thinking, then you're in the right place. Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell and you'll be well on your way. Now, let's face it, bad clients are far easier to come by than good clients. When you get a good client, you feel lucky. You feel that it's great to work with them. You thank your lucky stars that you're able to go out there and do your best work. But when you get a bad client, it drains on your energy, it drains on your resources. You're thinking about that client at nighttime when you're going to bed, when you wake up in the morning, and they can actually kill your business. They can drive your business into the ground. So you need to identify those clients early, fire them early, or turn them away so that you can focus your efforts on growing your own business. So that's what I wanna go through in this video. I wanna go through 10 signs that you should fire your clients right now. Sign number one, they start with the price. So if your prospect comes to you and says, how much for, that is a massive red flag because it shows a very, very critical thing about their psyche. And that is they are more focused on the price of their services than the outcome that they're trying to achieve. So if they come to you looking for the lowest possible price, if they come to you and their first question is how much for this, that's a massive red flag, know that they are only trying to get the lowest possible price. That is not the type of client that you want to be working with. They will end up costing you money in the long run, so make sure you identify them quickly and fire them early. Sign number two, they expect you to be on call. So there are some people out there that believe that just because they're paying you a fee that you are now their slave and whatever they ask you to do, you should do. So you need to set the boundaries out here early. You need to define the hours that you work and they need to respect those hours. They can't be demanding that you jump on a call with them at 11 p.m. if they are not the hours that you keep. So make sure if there are signs that they do want you to work outside your hours that you set those boundaries out and if they continue to push or continue to stomp their feet and demand, then fire that client. Sign number three, they don't respect the scope. Now, chances are if you've had some experience in the branding field, in the design field, that you know how important it is to have a proposal that includes what's in the scope of your work. And you send that on to the client, and you get them to agree with that. But even so, you still have clients that will come back to you and expect adjustments or changes that are beyond the scope or expect additional work that is beyond the scope. So make sure that you have your proposal and your agreement there that you can point back to. And if they continue to push on that, it's time to let them go. Sign number four, they have unrealistic expectations. Now, these unrealistic expectations could come in the form of what they're gonna get for their budget. It could come in the form of the hours that you're going to work or the capabilities that you have in house. They might be paying for a static design and they might suddenly ask you to make it into 3D or include a video within their website. So you do have clients out there who have unrealistic expectations. So make sure you try to identify signs of those unrealistic expectations early on. Sign number five, they're disrespectful. Now at the bare minimum, any relationship with a client should be built on mutual respect. And you will have clients out there who believe that it's okay to talk down to you or to have a tone or to just demand what they want from you in a way that's not respectful. And that could be directly to you or it could be to one of your staff members. But it's really important to nip that in the bud early, to talk directly to them, to tell them that that is not acceptable. And if it continues, then you let them go. And this can also add to the culture within your brand. If you have a staff member that has been the victim of one of your clients and has received you know, disrespectful comments or a tone and you step in there and you tell the client that it's unacceptable or you fire that client, then the culture that's built within that brand and the trust and the loyalty and the camaraderie that is built within that brand is really, really valuable. But at a bare minimum, there should be mutual respect between you and your client. Sign number six, delayed payments. Now you definitely should have milestones mapped out in terms of when you're going to get paid. And chances are at some stage, 
in your experience, you will have a client that will delay their payments. And you do have some clients that will delay their payments to try and use that as leverage to get what they want, whether that's within the scope or with outside the scope. But it's important to address that early. If they haven't delivered a payment when they said that they were going to, then stop all work until that payment is delivered and continue only after they have delivered that payment. And if it comes to a standoff, then talk directly to them, tell them that this was agreed and only move forward when that payment has been made. Sign number seven, over communication. Now look, we all want to help our clients. We all know that our clients are invested in their brand and that that's their baby and they're emotionally attached to it and they want the best for it. That is completely understandable. But it is important that they give you enough distance to be able to go and do what you need to do to do your job well. And if they're sending through questions multiple times a day, if they're sending through their thoughts and their ideas in one line emails, then that is a sign that, you know, they're really going to drain your resources. They're gonna drain that time if you allow them to. So set th those boundaries out, tell them that if they have questions to bulk them up into a single email or to only send them through on a particular day or to set a specific time that you give them where you're on the phone answering those questions, but make sure that you don't allow that over communication to sabotage your processes. Sign number eight, they're unclear on what they want. Now, I'm sure that at some stage you've had a client say to you, I don't know what I want, but I'll know it when I see it. Now, this is a clear sign that they do not know what they want. They haven't taken the time to formulate what success looks like for them. And if they don't know what success looks like, then you are never going to achieve success for them. So it's really, really important that before you embark on your work, that you have a clear direction from that client. They clearly define what it is that they want and give you those clear directions. If they don't, then stop all work and take the time to help them to get some clarity there, but certainly don't continue on that work with the idea that they will know it when they see it. Sign number nine, they're unresponsive. Now, it's very difficult to work with a client that is unresponsive because it kills the momentum. You might have a milestone that you're meeting and you go back to them with that milestone and they might take two or three days to respond to you and you're trying to have a conversation and they drag their feet on that response. And that really does kill the momentum and it might affect other jobs as well. So it's really important that if your client is unresponsive, take the time to communicate with them and tell them what your expectations are. And if that continues, then it's time to let them go. And sign number 10, changing their minds. Now, there's nothing worse when you have agreed upon a design or a direction and two or three days later, your client comes back to you and says to you, I'm having second thoughts. So again, it's really important that you have those boundaries set in place, that they are very clear on what it is that they want from the beginning. And you're very clear on what's included in the scope. And if they do turn to you and say, you know, I've changed my mind, it's really, really important that you can point to that scope and say, well, listen, this is not included within the scope. We need to adjust the budget. But again, if they have those expectations that you will just do that without adjusting the budget, then maybe it's time to have that conversation with them. Now, look, it's not easy to let a client go. Chances are, you need the revenue that's coming in from that that client or you've paid somebody already for some of the work that's been done. But if you allow these types of clients into your business, then they're gonna hamper any kind of growth and you're better off having a system in place to be able to identify who those clients are and in the beginning have a conversation with them and set out those boundaries. If they continue to be difficult clients, then just let them go. You are far better off investing the time that you will save from difficult clients in investing in yourself, in investing in your business, in investing in your processes. That is what will move the needle within your business and that is what will help you to attract clients who value what you do.